This video will guide you through the standard installation of Cardinal Scale Manufacturing's Guardian Hydraulic Truck Scale. Site preparation is the same as with any standard Cardinal Truck Scale installation. Pay close attention to the foundation drawings you receive to ensure that the foundation is correct and ready to receive the scale. Conduit must be run from each load cell location to a central pull box located near the center of the scale and from this central pull box to the totalizer junction box. The totalizer junction box should be located in a protected area but outside where it is at approximately the same temperature as the scale. Please note that the length of the tubing from the load cells to the totalizer junction box must not exceed 125 feet. Also, be careful to avoid tight radius bends in the conduit that will make it difficult to pull the load cell tubing through. After the foundation has been completed and conduit installed, installation of the scale may begin. Start by installing leveling screws in each corner of all of the grout plates. Make certain that the bolt head of these screws are on the side of the plate that has the circular indentation. This is the top of the plate. Adjust each of these screws so that 1 and 3 8 inch of the screw protrudes from the bottom of the grout plate. Remember that the top of the grout plate has the circular recess. Once the leveling screws have been installed in the grout plate, place the first grout plate at the proper place on the foundation pier. Place the remaining grout plates at the proper location. Using a 6 inch level, check the level condition of each grout plate. If the bubble in the level is not within the two center marks, use the leveling screws to adjust the grout plate until a level condition in both directions is achieved. Once the grout plates are level, you can proceed with the installation of the load cells. Place a guardian load cell on the top of each grout plate. Rotate the load cell so that its bleed port is facing out, away from the scale. Install the four load cell clamps and secure the retaining bolts. Proceed in this manner until all of the SST load cells are installed. Install the totalizer enclosure, mounting it at least 24 inches above the ground to allow connection of the hydraulic tubes from the load cells. To make the installation easier, install the 2-inch conduit from the scale directly beneath the left side of the totalizer. Secure the totalizer to a mounting surface. Make certain that the totalizer is securely fastened to the mounting surface to eliminate any movement in the hydraulic tubes from the load cells. Beginning with the longest run, cut the hydraulic tube to length for each load cell. Keep in mind that the pieces cut off from the longer runs may be long enough to use for the shorter runs. Be certain to mark the load cell position for each tube on the totalizer end so that they can be easily identified later. Leave enough length in the tube so that a loop can be formed in the tube at the load cell end to allow the cell to be moved later should it be necessary. A loop at the totalizer end allows a new ferrule set to be installed in the future, if necessary, without having to replace the tube. Make certain that you do not attach the hydraulic tubes to the scale waybridge to prevent any future damage resulting from movement of the waybridge. This movement over time can result in fatigue of the tube and result in leaks. Using a sharp tube cutter, cut one inch from each end of all the hydraulic tubes. Be careful to cut only halfway through the tube, then gently bend it back and forth until it breaks to the finished cut. This method of cutting keeps the tube from collapsing when the cutter breaks through the tube wall. Remove any burrs from the end of the tube, then install the cap and ferrule set on the tube. Using the pre-swaging tool, lock the ferrule in place. Next, hand tighten the cap on the fixture and then turn the ferrule locks three quarters of a turn to get them into the correct position. Remove the cap and tube from the fixture and using a 1 16th inch drill, open the inside diameter of the tube. Repeat this for the remaining hydraulic tubes. Once the hydraulic tubes have been attached to the Guardian hydraulic load cells, the waybridge may be installed. Place blocks on the foundation to support the waybridge. Never lower the waybridge onto the load cells. Damage to the load cell diaphragms can result if the waybridge is lowered directly onto the load cells using a crane. Once the waybridge is in place and the crane removed, the waybridge can be jacked up and the blocks removed. The side check bolts and check rods may now be installed. Make sure not to tighten them at this stage since they will be adjusted later. 
Complete the installation of the hydraulic tubing by connecting them to the totalizer bulkhead fittings. They are normally installed where the section number one tubes are placed toward the front of the enclosure with the odd cells on the left and the even on the right. Tube caps should be hand tightened plus an additional quarter of a turn to lock the fittings into place. Check all of the fittings to ensure that they are properly terminated, then proceed. Fill the pressure pump with oil and purge all air from the pump before attaching it to the inlet port located on the right side of the bottom of the totalizer enclosure. Remove the plastic gauge port plugs from load cell number one and place a .026 inch thick shim in each of the three gauge ports. Note that weight must never be applied to the load cell until after its hydraulic circuit has been filled with hydraulic fluid and purged of air. Placing a weight on a cell before the hydraulic fluid has been installed and the tube purged of air, or overfilling it, can result in damage to the pressure diaphragm of that load cell. Remove air from the hydraulic tube working from the totalizer end of the system. Working with load cell number one, open the manifold valve number one until oil is seen coming out of the hydraulic tube at the load cell end. Once hydraulic fluid is coming out of the tube, remove the plug from the load cell inlet fitting and install the hydraulic tube. Hand tighten the nut and then turn it an additional 1 8 to 1 quarter of a turn. Remove the cap from the bleed port at the load cell and attach a clear plastic bleed tube to it. Place the other end of the tube into a suitable clean container. Make sure that there is no trapped air within the load cell. Pump the hydraulic pump one more stroke and close the manifold valve for load cell number one. Check to see if the three gauges at the load cell are snug in the cell. If not, repeat this procedure until the gauges are snug. Once all of the gauges are snug, Carefully and slowly open the bleed port until releasing just a few drops of oil, then close the bleed port. Check the gauges to see if they can be removed. If not, repeat this procedure until such time that the shims can be removed. The cell's gauge cap should be very close to the 0.27 plus or minus 0.001 inch necessary for operation. Repeat this procedure for all load cells. Next, adjust the elevation of the weigh bridge so that it is even with the approaches on both ends. If the grout has not been poured, you can use the four leveling screws to adjust the grout plates. If the grout has been poured, add shims to the top of the cell to achieve the desired elevation of the weigh bridge. Attach the weight indicator to the totalizer junction box using shielded cable and following the directions in the weight indicator owner's manual. With the indicator power on, measure the millivolt output from each pressure transducer to make sure that the load is evenly distributed among the load cells. Add or subtract shims at the top of each cell until all of the outputs are within plus or minus 0.1 millivolt. Test data for each of the pressure transducers is located on the inner door panel of the totalizer. Please note, the dead load millivolt output for the end cells will be lower than the output for the cells in the middle section, since they have twice the amount of dead load on them. Verify that all of the grout plates are level in both directions and that all of the load cell outputs have been properly adjusted. Then install grout forms or dams around each load cell grout plate. This is very important in the calibration and long-term stability of the load cells. It is a good idea to caulk the bottom of the forms to not only hold them in place, but to also prevent any leakage of grout onto the surrounding foundation. Use a good non-shrinking grout. Pour enough grout so that it fills the grout form and flows fully beneath the grout plate. Using a funnel to pour the grout into the form is helpful and avoids spillage onto the load cell, weigh bridge, or surrounding foundation. Vibration of the grout plate helps the grout to flow smoothly and evenly, eliminating voids and ensuring that the full load-bearing capacity is achieved. Allow the grout to cure overnight before placing a load on the scale. Make sure you maintain a tidy work area and clean up all excess hydraulic fluid that may have bled onto the grout plate and weigh bridge. Not only does this make for a more attractive looking installation, but it also aids in identifying any leaks later on. Remove excess grouting material and grout forms. Like all scales, Cardinal's Guardian Truck Scale requires routine maintenance to keep it working at maximum efficiency and performance. 
Cardinal's American-made Guardian Hydraulic Truck Scales offer the highest level of protection against water, lightning, power surges, and extreme climatic conditions. The Guardian SST Series load cells are protected under a true lifetime warranty when purchased with the Guardian Truck Scale and installed as shown in this video. For more information about Cardinal's Guardian Hydraulic Truck Scales, please call 1-800-441-4237 or visit us online at www.cardinalscale.com. Cardinal Scale, building a better way since 1950.